And he says, what chance of destiny, Brunetto says, brings thee down here before thy last day? And who is this that shows the way? Chance? Destiny? Brunetto has no understanding of the trajectory of Dante's life and adventure. And this is really the beginning of a series of misunderstandings between the teacher and the disciple. Two different value systems are being deployed and they are going to be in collision with, with, with each other. Brunetto speaks like a true humanist, a man who belongs to the Ciceronian and who espouses the Ciceronian ethics, for whom here the world is one indeed of chance encounters, uh, uh, destiny uh, that takes us one way or the other, and there is nothing indeed uh, providential uh, about it. And, and Dante uh, uh, responds by really giving a kind of pithy <coughs> summary of his experience in the last few hours. Up above there, in the bright light, I answered, I answered him, before my age was at the full, he repeats, Inferno one. I lost my way in a valley. He appeared to me when I was returning to it, and by this road, he leads me home. These are extraordinary words, because what home means for the politically minded, Florence-centered sense of existence of Brunetto is not the idea of what home means for Dante. For Dante, home is the place of the soul. And the place where the soul is uh, at its most distended, the, the distension of the soul occurs. For Brunetto, home can only be the city of Florence. One has a political frame of reference, the other one has a theological frame of reference. And the two are colliding with each other. Let's continue and see how this is extraordinary. And he said to me, if you follow thy star, now again, an extension of the language, the metaphor picks up the metaphor of chance or destiny, kind of astrology, follow your star, right? Uh, the astrology of the dest in the destiny of Dante, thou cannot fail of a glorious heaven. Another, another, Dante is dramatizing the radical ambiguity of words that seem to have be so bland, like glorious. What glorious means to a humanist is not what glorious means to a theologically minded thinker. You know, in theology one thinks of nature, grace, and glory. And Dante begins Paradise One, the first word with which he begins is the glory of him, the glory him who moves all things. And glory from Brunetto means the happy ending, fame, and whatever. The glorious heaven, if I discern rightly in thy fair life, and had I not died too soon, seeing heaven so gracious to thee, again, uh, uh, this is now glorious and grace once again to thee, I would have strengthened thee in thy work. But that thankless and malig malignant folk, which came down of old from Fiesole and still keeps something of the mountain and the rock, shall become for thy well-doing thine enemy. And with reason, for among the bitter sorbs, it's not natural the sweet fig should come to fruit. Old fame, so from Brunetto's point of view, the reference of all the crises, the spiritual crises, the loss of self, of Dante can only be political. That Brunetto makes an incredible mistake of believing that Dante's experience is exactly the replica of his own. He lost the city while he was, by the way, at Roncesvalles, the place, you know, where the, where the great paladin of Charlemagne or Roland uh, was, was uh, it's a symbolic place he chooses, was defeated. And now this is exactly what he thinks is happening also to, to Dante, uh, to the pilgrim.